Welcome to this Arnold Culliford Knitwear tutorial on working with the travelling magic loop method. Magic loop is a fantastic way of working small circumferences in the round on a long circular needle. So it's the sort of thing you can use for hats, sleeves of sweaters, socks, all sorts of things. Anything where you'd want a small circumference and you don't either don't have a perfectly sized circular needle or you just want to use this method. I tend to use either an 80 or 100 centimeter circular needle when I'm using the magic loop method. That translates to 32 to 40 inches. You can use any length, but I find that those two lengths are the most comfortable for most people. The traveling magic loop method is a clever way of ensuring that you always have an even tension when you switch from one needle tip to the other. So if you've tried the magic loop method previously but had difficulties keeping that join neat and maybe you've had little ladders in your knitting where you've changed from one needle to the other, then the traveling magic loop method should sort that out entirely for you. Here I've cast on some stitches onto my long circular needle and I've checked that the cast on edge isn't twisted, that it's in a straight line. Here are the stitches that I've just finished casting on and here are the ones I did at the beginning. And I'm going to fold my knitting in half so that the ones I did at the beginning are at the front and the ones I've just cast on are at the back. I'm then going to pinch my work so that I can pull a loop of cable between two stitches at roughly that halfway point. It doesn't have to be exact at all. So I don't want to move this needle here that's already in the stitches. We don't want them sliding off. We're just putting those stitches onto that front needle tip. So I've now am set up with a loop of cable on the left my needle tips pointing to the right. And for straightforward magic loop, this is where I'd begin working. For traveling magic loop, the difference is that we're always going to start working, instead of having a free needle tip with nothing on it, we're always going to start working with a few stitches on that right hand needle tip. So I'm just going to pull the needle tip out a little, and I'm going to pull out a loop of cable so that I've just got three four, two, whatever number you like, three seems to work quite well. Three stitches on that left hand, sorry, right hand needle tip. So on the left hand tip here, I've got the stitches, that was where I started the cast on. I've then got a loop of cable and then almost half the stitches at the back here, all sitting on the cable. And now on the right needle tip, I've just got three stitches and here's my tail and my working yarn. So there's the tail and there's the working yarn. And I'm going to take that to the back because I'm going to knit across these stitches. And I just find always having some stitches on that right needle just makes it easier to ensure that you've got the tension absolutely perfect between the stitches at the join. So now that I've knitted into that first stitch on the left hand needle, I'm going to continue knitting across until I've completed all the stitches on that needle and I've reached that free loop. I've come to the end of those stitches on my left hand needle. Here's the last one. And now I've got that left hand needle tip hanging free. So I'm going to drop that down turn the work around so that my working yarn is attached to the needle at the rear and then going to pull on the loop so that the stitches that were on the cable now run onto that front needle tip. Now normal magic loop I'd pull out the rear one and start working but what I'm going to do again is I'm going to pull that rear needle along and pinch out a loop of cable so that I've got three stitches on that right needle. And then I just, again, now when I pull on the yarn, I've got a needle tip in, in that stitch, so I can't over tighten it and I can't leave it too loose. I can make sure that it matches the tension all the way along the row.
And then you continue working along and then you're going to repeat that process. So I'll show you how it looks when you've got a bit more fabric on your needles. Here's a tube I've been working on for a while. You'll notice I've got a start of the round marker on my needles here because when we use the traveling magic loop method, the start of the round doesn't stay just at one point between the needle tips, so we have to have a marker in there. So I'm going to knit along until I come to the end. I use up the last stitches on the left hand needle. That left needle tip is now free, so I'm turning the work around, pulling on my loop at the left so that I push the stitches onto the needle tip. And then instead of just pulling that round and knitting, we're going to pull it and then pinch through that loop so that we've got a few stitches here on the left needle. And then we can continue to work along our round. I do hope you found that helpful to see how the traveling magic loop works. We've also got a video tutorial on the magic loop and I'll pop it here in the end card in a second. If you've enjoyed this video tutorial, then do subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button down here and then you'll be sure to know when we release our next video. And finally, we're able to produce all of our video tutorials free from adverts thanks to the purchases made through our website. We sell lots of books and yarn related to techniques and you can find them up in the top there. Thanks ever so much for watching. Bye bye.